San Antonio starts right now. Hi, good morning. It is Thursday, April 15th. We have a developing weather situation. We want to go straight to Justin Horn in the Weather Lab. Hey there, good morning, guys. Uh, we're looking live outside right now. We've got some uh, cloudy conditions, a little bit of fog and drizzle here in town. But what we're watching is out west. Severe storms trying to develop. We have a new severe thunderstorm watch that does not include San Antonio, but parts of the hill country until 3 o'clock. Let's start with the radar, show you where these storms are. Right now, two large storms that do have warnings for them, severe thunderstorm warnings. The first one there in eastern Valverde County moving into uh, Edwards County. This is going to go until 930 this morning. These storms are moving east at about 20 miles per hour. We'll put it in motion here and uh, you'll be able to see uh, these storms as they have developed out near Del Rio and you can see they sort of exploded there and then they are moving east. We've got another warning uh, south of that there in Kinney County. And this is going to go until 945. We'll zoom in on this storm a little bit closer uh, because it is getting closer to Brackettville. It's just to your north and it's going to be just to the north and west of town where we're likely going to see some of the larger hail with this. Uh, we'll put on the hail track here and it does look like uh, we have seen some hail with this storm just north and west of Brackettville and that will likely continue as uh, as we go forward in time here. Now we could see a couple more storms develop again. All of this right now is west of San Antonio. And uh, again, that severe thunderstorm watch and I'll bring that up real quick goes until 3 p.m. Uh, today and includes uh, basically uh, the northwestern portion there of the viewing area, Rock Springs, Lake E. Bandera, even down into Medina County. We're going to have more on this. We're going to get you an update on these storms and get you the forecast as well. Coming up here in just a few minutes, guys. All right, thank you, Justin. Let's take a look at today's nine at nine. The former police officer charged with second degree manslaughter in the death of Dante Wright will face a Minnesota judge today. If convicted, Kim Potter would face up to 10 years in prison and a $20,000 fine. At least one more witness will take the stand for the defense today in the trial of former Minneapolis police officer Derek Chauvin. Chauvin is charged with second and third degree murder and second degree manslaughter in the death of George Floyd. Today, Chicago city officials will release the body cam video of an officer shooting and killing a 13 year old boy last month. Police say Adam Toledo had a gun in his hand when the officer shot him in the chest. The prime suspect in the 25 year disappearance of California college student Kristen Smart will appear in court today for his first formal hearing. Police say Paul Flores was the last person seen with Smart before she vanished in 1996. Her body was never recovered. The Biden administration announced the expulsion of 10 Russian diplomats and sanctions against Russian companies today. It comes after Russian hackers allegedly infected software with malicious code that allowed them to access the networks of at least nine U.S. federal agencies last year. The top watchdog for the U.S. Capitol Police will testify to Congress today for the first time. He's expected to talk about the department's broad failures before and during the January 6th Capitol riot. Democrats will introduce a bill to expand the U.S. Supreme Court from nine to 13 justices. The chair of the House Judiciary Committee said during a meeting yesterday the announcement would be made today. A House committee approved a bill Wednesday to set up a 13-person commission to study possible reparations from the U.S. government to descendants of slaves. The bill will now go to the full House for a vote. The WNBA draft will take place tonight at 6 on ESPN. San Antonio native Kiana Williams is one of the players hoping to get drafted following her NCAA championship win with Stanford right here in San Antonio. And that's today's 9 at 9. Yeah, good luck to Kiana in the WNBA draft. We're pulling for you. Yeah, we are. We have a story that's pretty interesting, but we want you to listen to this first. It's the music of a spider's web. No, that's from, a, that's from a Steven Spielberg movie. I don't know what you're talking about. No. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so the folks over at MIT, Massachusetts Institute of Technology, do some amazing work. And they're actually analyzing the vibrations and the sounds that come from actual spider's webs. And we just heard them. 
Yeah, it's a uh, it's pretty pretty neat. So uh, this the researcher and his team they actually have created 3D models of spider webs. When this is when the arachnids were doing different things such as construction, repair, hunting, and feeding. Then they listened for patterns in the spider signals and recreated the sounds using computers and mathematical algorithms. Yeah, one of these brainiacs at MIT said uh, spiders are a whole different animal when they see or sense isn't it actually audible or visible to the human eye or the human ear. And so by transposing it, we begin to experience that. So the same researcher says that he hopes his team's work could enable humans to understand the language of a spider and one day communicate with them. That is absolutely bizarre. <laughs> have you heard anything like that no, before? No, I, I sure have not. That's very interesting. Strange stuff. I'm, I'm glad we got to hear it though. Yes, uh, very, very interesting. Kind of well, scary, though. <laughs> that's exactly. Top stories coming up right now. A quick look at TransSky. Let's see how things are looking out there. We've noticed some moisture start to work its way in, and there it is at I-35 and Topper Wine right now. It doesn't even appear to be affecting traffic, but we do have an incident with SAPD on the scene out there, 410 San Pedro, and we have flashing lights at 10 near 410. So we do have a few incidents that we can keep an eye on in this hour of GMSA. Yes, drivers need to watch out for that fog and drizzle. Top stories we're following today. City Council members will discuss the future of the Alamo Master Plan during a meeting today. Details of the revamp plan were released just last week. A key component to the original plan was moving that. The Cenotaph, you may remember the Texas Historical Commission decided back in September the city could not do that. The new version of the plan would not move the monument. The site would be marked off by distinct pavers or stones. City Council meetings started just a few minutes ago, and if anything important happens, we will let you know about it in our later newscast. San Antonio Police Crime Stoppers hoping you can help them find two men who they say are responsible for an aggravated robbery. It happened in the 3500 block of Broadway on Sunday, March 21st. Police tell us one of the men approached the victim while showing them a weapon. That's when officers say the suspect demanded money and the victim's belongings. Police say the two suspects drove off in a white four-door vehicle uh, like the one you see there in the center of your screen. If you recognize these guys or have information that could lead to an arrest, call Crime Stoppers at 210-224-STOP. Online registration is now open for two vaccination clinics operated by WellMed. People 18 and older can sign up to get the first dose of Moderna's COVID-19 vaccine. Appointments available April 19th and uh, to the 23rd at the Elvira Cisneros and Alicia Trevino Lopez Senior Centers. We have links to sign up from an appointment right now on KSAT.com. You can also jot down this number and call them at 833 833- 968-1745. That hotline is open from 8 a.m. through 8 p.m. Please be patient. Just keep trying. You will eventually get through. A reminder that Via Metropolitan Transit is holding a virtual job fair for bus operators and mechanics today. It's happening right now until noon on Zoom. Via says new hires will receive paid training. No experience required for drivers, but mechanics should have three years experience or education. To attend the job fair, just go to viainfo.net slash employment. We also have a link on kset.com. Hey, don't forget to tune in to our forum with mayoral candidate Denise Gutierrez Homer tonight. We'll visit with her on air at 630 during our KSAT Q&A, and then the forum will begin online at kset.com at 7. If you missed the forums with Mayor Ron Nierenberg and former Councilman Greg Brockhouse, you can watch them on our website right now. In your morning headlines, a police ambush left several officers injured this week. A hiker missing in California gets very lucky and an unwanted lizard encounter in the state of Florida. Erica Hernandez joins us live now with the details. Hey, good morning, Erica. Morning. Hey, guys, good morning. Well, we start with some dash cam video of a police ambush in Georgia. We do want to warn you that this video may be disturbing to watch. This happened on Monday after a police chase in Carrollton, Georgia. The officers were chasing two suspects who were shooting at them while inside a vehicle. The release footage shows the moment deputies arrive at the scene where the suspects crash their car. Three officers were injured and one of the suspects was killed when officers returned fire. The other suspect is in police custody facing numerous charges. The sheriff's office there says the video was made public to show the severity of the situation and to highlight the actions of the officers involved. More video to show you this morning, this time of a confrontation that resulted in charges for a soldier 
in South Carolina. This video started circulating on social media. It shows Jonathan Pentland encounter a black man on the sidewalk in a subdivision in Richland County. It's unclear what led to the fight. But before this incident, two reports had been made that an African-American man had incidents with two separate women in the area. Pentland can be heard on the video demanding the man to go away. He responds saying he was just walking to his nearby home. The confrontation continues with Pentland pushing the man and demanding him leave or that he would remove himself. This video has now led police to arrest Pentland. That's assault and battery when you place your hands on someone, and he did. The video showed that he did, and that's the evidence that we have that he was charged with. Fort Jackson, where Pentland is stationed, that has also opened an investigation into this incident. The other man in the video has not been identified, and police are still trying to figure out if he, in fact, was the person who was involved in the prior incidents. A missing hiker in California has a cell phone picture and a map enthusiast to thank for his rescue. Rene Compion, an avid hiker, was in Angeles National Forest earlier this week when he got lost because of burned or destroyed signs. In a last-ditch effort to call for some help, Rene found a spot where he got a cell signal to send a text and two photos to his roommate showing where he was at. Those, those are photos right there. His phone then died, and he had to spend over 24 hours out in the wilderness. His roommate got one of the pictures and took it to the sheriff's office. They put it on social me media, asking the public if he knew where that photo was taken. A map enthusiast saw it and was able to pinpoint his location. Thank God they found me. Like, I, I was like, a tear came out a little bit. Like, I, like I'm safe. Thank you, everybody, for your efforts and for helping in the search. Um, so I'm grateful that that message got out and that everybody did what they did. Besides being dehydrated and tired, Renee is doing just fine. And fa finally, what would you guys do if you're casually walking through your home and then you came face to face with a four foot lizard? Um, say hello. <laughs> say hello. <laughs> I'd probably walk the other way. Show exactly. The door. <laughs> well, in Florida, Kaylee Kelly took an unexpected walk on the wild side. An iguana broke into her home while she was gone. When she got home, she saw a mess and then heard a noise coming from her bedroom, and that is when she spotted that lizard right there. She started TikToking the bizarre scene in one of those videos. She says, Tell me you live in Florida without telling me you live in Florida. Her videos have amassed millions of views. Animal Control came out to help her, and they were able to remove the lizard. And there's no better way to describe living in Florida than showing a lizard in your home, or a snake, or a gator, or something. I have a question. Oh, gosh, yes. Um, it said it broke into the home. Did it have a crowbar? Or... <laughs> We don't know the we details. We don't know the details. Sneaky I mean, lizard. It, it's a sneaky lizard. I mean, they Just, find their ways. They okay. could have chewed through a screen. I mean, we. That's. I'll, more I'll, I'll work on finding out that. Inquiring yeah. minds want to know. We'll work on it. Thank you very much, Thanks, Erica. Erica. Right now, it's 10 minutes past the hour, about 67 degrees. And still ahead on GMSA at 9, a new type of physical therapy helping veterans across the Alamo City. Max Massey explains how the different treatments work. Although, although Fiesta has been pushed back until June due to the pandemic, there's a lovely place here in San Antonio that has sprinkled the favorite sights and colors of Fiesta. Just ahead on GMSA, where and when you can experience this. And let's take a look at the Dow. It's up about 200 points, 33,933. And welcome back. It's 914. Te Amo Fiesta. That's the name of the Witty Museum's newest exhibit that opens up in less than an hour. It's a safe celebration that honors the colors and magic of Fiesta right here in San Antonio. Alicia Barrera live at the Witty Museum with more on what visitors can expect. So, Alicia, what can we expect? So much color, so much joy. Just look at the entrance here. I really feel like I'm at... Uh, fiesta just ready to crack some cascarones on someone but look at all the color all the colors and sights that we love about fiesta the royalty of course all of that you can see here at the new exhibit at the witty and yes te amo fiesta i love you fiesta amy fulkerson chief curator for the witty museum you've been hard at work putting this all together with your team what's your favorite part of the exhibit? You know, I love all the color and the sparkle and that this is an exhibit that just really makes you feel happy and uh, cheerful and puts you in the mood for Fiesta. And then we talk about, well, we see the royalty, but you mentioned that there's also royalty that isn't official, but still so loved here in San Antonio. Absolutely. So not only do we have all nine of the official uh, royals from the Fiesta Commission, 
But we've also been able to include some additional unofficial Fiesta royalty like El Rey Fido. And uh, we've included Fiesta Especial this year as well. And, so. and another thing to note is that you say this is a love letter to San Antonio. It really is. You know, last year, so many people were missing Fiesta. This is one of those elements where it's a way that we mark our time here in San Antonio. In spring, we get Fiesta. And when we don't have it, it's sort of like, okay, what happened? Uh, how, how do I move forward in terms of how I mark the, the time, the passage of time? And so this exhibit allows us to remember all the great things that Fiesta does for our community, all of the nonprofits and the volunteers, and the way that they give back to our community. And coming up on GMSA at 930, Mark Stephanie will be talking about the new Fiesta medal. I have a peek at that. And also, since we didn't really get to see much of royalty from last year, there's a chance to hear directly from them. We'll have those details in the next half hour. Mark Steph, back to you. That's cool. We look forward to that. Thank you, Alicia. Thank you, Alicia. Over to Justin Horn. And we are all business today because uh, we're talking about a big severe thunderstorm watch box. Yeah, we have a severe thunderstorm watch box. It's north and west of San Antonio, so it does not include San Antonio, uh, but uh, we will see the potential for some showers and storms today. Let's go back to radar here and uh, show you where these storms are at this hour. And we see that uh, we've got three storms here with warnings on them. Now, the good news here is that this is mainly over open land here, uh, but these still can do some damage. So here's our first storm, Northern Edwards County. It does have a warning on it. Actually, let's start with this storm down here near Brackettville because it is just north of town. It looks like the city of Brackettville just missed out on some of the hail with this. The core of this storm is moving just to your north, but this warning goes until 945 and it is moving east at about 20 miles per hour or so. So it's going to more or less parallel Highway 90. Again, most of this is open ranch land here, but we'll keep an eye on that storm. Another one just southwest of Rock Springs. This warning goes until 930. Nice little cell here. Looks like there's a little core of perhaps some hail there in uh, western parts of Edwards County. And then another storm here in the northern extent of the county goes until 10 a.m. And this will start moving out of the viewing area. So those are the three storms we have right now that are carrying warnings on them. And uh, here in San Antonio, things are pretty quiet. Now, that's uh, not to say we're not seeing a little bit of drizzle because we are. We're reporting that at the airport, but it's just not being picked up on radar. Most of everything we're seeing here is light. So these are the three storms we'll watch for now. And there is some more development back out towards Del Rio as well. And this is an area where we could see some of those stronger storms, as we mentioned, that severe thunderstorm watch box in place there. Forecast today here in San Antonio, about a 30% chance of rain across the board. Temperatures will be in the 70s. Now, this looks like it's going to rain all day. It will not. We'll have some drizzle here in the morning, and there is potential for some storms in the afternoon, but it's not going to be an all-day rain event, and it's going to be hit or miss. Not everybody is going to get any uh, significant rainfall. So we showed you the radar there and the uh, severe thunderstorm watch. Looks like we're on a, a loop here. Let me fix what, we've had, what we have, and we'll get into the forecast because we are expecting some cooler temperatures by the weekend. Frontal boundary will work south and uh, give us those uh, temperatures in the 60s. So that'll be a, a big change for us uh, this weekend with some chances for a few showers on Saturday as well. So we've been through this a couple of times here. There's the severe thunderstorm watch until 3 p.m. Uh, for the Hill Country. And this is the potential today. Storm Prediction Center, basically the same ideas we're seeing with that watch includes much of the Hill Country. The main threat today would be some large hail. 66 right now at the airport, a little bit of drizzle coming down. Northeasterly winds at about 12 miles per hour. There is some fog out there too, so be careful. The visibility is not too, too bad, but it is down some, and that's probably because of some of that drizzle, drizzle that's coming down. We're seeing that in Kerrville and out towards Rock Springs as well. Temperatures in the 60s and 70s. We should warm into the 70s today, as we mentioned, with that 30% chance of rain. And here's the bigger picture. Storms sort of lining up here, so that's what I want to watch. They are moving east. The question is how far east will they make it before they die down a little bit? But that is within that watch box, and so we'll have a close eye on the radar most of today. As we zoom out, cooler temperatures, colder temperatures off to the north and west, and some of that cold air is going to be working down this weekend, as I mentioned. So 85 tomorrow, 30% chance of rain. We will see some clearing, I think, tomorrow afternoon. Then we talked about those cooler temperatures this weekend. 67 on Saturday, windy, 20% chance of rain. And then low humidity on Sunday. Sunday looks okay. And uh, next week we'll get back into the 80s. But uh, a little busy today, guys. We'll 
watch the radar closely for you. Thank you, Justin. I know you will. Thank you so much, Justin. Right now, 921, we're in the 60s. And still ahead on GMSA at 9. Coronavirus numbers are still trending in the right direction about a month after Governor Greg Abbott lifted the mask mandate. We'll talk with Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune about this trend and why health experts are still urging caution. A new type of physical therapy aimed for anyone, whether they're a veteran, a professional athlete, or someone with just a stressful job. I'm Max Massey. I'll explain later in the show. San Antonio, of course, is known worldwide as Military City USA, and now an Air Force veteran is bringing unique ways to help the men and women who served our country. Max Massey introduces us to Crisis, a human performance and recovery, and explains how it's helping veterans across the Alamo City. I loaded bombs on B-1s, F-16s, and I loaded guns on HH-60s for combat search and rescue. A.J. Perkins served in the Air Force for 10 years. Both of my shoulders, my neck, my back, knees, and then you have the constant ringing in your ears from working around aircraft. And now he frequents crisis. This is a center started by this man, 26-year Air Force veteran Doug Isaacs. Decided to create a brand to be able to bring a lot of things that we used in elite units and, you know, elite sports and bringing it more mainstream uh, to allow people in the community and our veterans to be able to use the, the services that we provide. And these programs help everyone from veterans to professional athletes to anyone with just a stressful job. And there are four very different, very distinct types of therapies. In here is about 10 inches deep of water where there's about 1,000 pounds of Epsom salt. First is floating, and it's exactly what it sounds like. Floating in complete silence and darkness in 850 pounds of Epsom salt. Being able to float actually allows me to take all that pressure that was put on my body. Uh, it's something about being weightless that helps with my, my neck pain, my shoulder pain, allows my joints and everything to re-separate, let that fluid um, recirculate, and it, it helps, it calms my mind and actually allows me to get a pretty good night sleep. The second option is sound therapy. It's four um, sound therapy chairs which use a viable acoustic technology. Um, it allows the um, body to receive both frequencies and the the feeling the, the vibroacoustics coming through the body down to the cellular level. Which has been found to be extremely effective. The sound therapy kind of uh, the, with the frequencies that kind of help allow my body to uh, calm down, uh, it stops the constant ringing in my ears, believe it or not, because I hear it all the time. And how about this, a salt chamber called dry salt therapy. The salt gets crushed and it's super, super fine. And it gets basically cycled from over here through the room. So it's almost like a fine mist. It's equivalent to being at the beach anywhere for up to like three days. So it's good for lung capacity, multi-purpose room. And lastly, this machine. Close it. This is the Novathor. In here. It uses so photobiomodulation, basically infrared so that helps the body create, heal and relieve pain. Out. People have been turning to Novathor as a solution to manage their pain without the use of opioids. And these results are life-changing. They're helping us see that we don't always have to have some kind of medication uh, to cope with what we have. There, there's alternatives to it that, that actually work, that help. Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Right now it's 927. There is more ahead on GMS 8 and 9. Bush wants to hire your dog to be its official dog brew taster. What you need to do to apply for the position that comes with a nice paycheck and benefits. There has been bipartisan criticism of Governor Abbott's handling of the pandemic. And now the Senate passed a bill to limit his executive authority during emergencies. We'll talk to Alana Rocha from the Texas Tribune about what lawmakers are saying regarding the measure next. It has been about a month since Governor Greg Abbott lifted the mask mandate in Texas. And as of right now, coronavirus numbers are still trending in the right direction. Health experts are still urging caution. Lawmakers in both parties have been critical of the governor, governor's executive actions in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune joins us to explain the bipartisan criticism. Good morning, Alana. Good morning. Daily cases and the positivity rate have leveled off since the governor lifted the mask order, but experts warn it's too soon to celebrate. Why is that? Well, several factors, right? Uh, the fact that, you know, had the mask mandate uh, stayed in place, they argue that the declines on the positivity rate and rate of new cases 
uh, would be greater. And the fact that they're stabilizing at a high level is not necessarily good news at this stage in the pandemic when we're seeing uh, vaccines ramp up and, you know, being a year into this, people know how to protect themselves. Uh, so those declines would be greater. The fact that we're well short of herd immunity right now, it's about 20 percent of the Texas adults are uh, fully vaccinated against COVID-19. Uh, some epidemiologists put the threshold for herd immunity at as high as 90 percent, as low as 60 percent. We're still well short of that. Uh, so, yes, the, they're they're you know saying with that and the presence of variants to remain cautious. And Alana, the Senate passed a bill to limit Abbott's executive authority during an emergency. It still needs to be approved by the House. And there has been bipartisan criticism for Abbott's handling of the pandemic and the decisions he's made, but not necessarily for this measure. Why not? Yeah, I mean, you, you've seen uh, members of his own party say that he's been overreaching uh, with his executive authority in the past year. But uh, and Democrats, of course, as well, saying he hasn't gone far enough in, in, in enacting restrictions to, you know, uh, not have the virus spread, but uh, Democrats this week kind of joined with Abbott in saying, you know, there's a concern of, you know, getting this to voters. If it's approved, it would require the governor to call um, a special session so they can declare, lawmakers can declare a, a state emergency. But they said, look, you know, if this the past year has taught us anything, it's that we need to be nimble in our decision making. And the legislature doesn't necessarily lend itself uh, to quick decision making, uh, you know, within hours sometimes if needed. And so there, there's concern on that front from some Democrats. Um, you know, this might not be the best way to, you know, be a check on Abbott or, or the governor and uh, enacting executive action. Voters could also be deciding whether to bring casinos to Texas. Today, the gaming empire Las Vegas Sands is launching a multi-million dollar ad blitz to support its campaign to bring four destination resorts to the state's four largest metro areas. Do we really think this is the session lawmakers entertain casinos or expanded gambling in any form in Texas? We know, of course, bills have to pass the House and Senate. You have different uh, thinking from uh, the, the men in charge of those chambers. The Lieutenant Governor Dan Patrick isn't that warm uh, to the idea, whereas uh, House Speaker Dade Phelan is more open to, uh, you know, maybe exploring this. Uh, but the measures aren't really moving fast as far as uh, in the legislative process in either chamber. Uh, these ads are trying to appeal to, to voters, you know, pocketbooks or, or the economy and say, look, every day, billions of dollars or every year, billions of dollars uh, in tourism money is going across state lines uh, to casinos in, you know, New Mexico, Oklahoma, whatever it might be, Louisiana. Um, and that's money that could stay here. And so this, again, would be put to voters uh, to allow the state to approve uh, for um, licenses for casinos in the four largest cities. But again, without the huge budget shortfall to, to you know, lawmakers scramble to find a way to fill, it doesn't seem like it, this might be the session. All right, Alana Rocha with the Texas Tribune. Thank you for joining us today. Thank you. Outside with live cam, strong to severe storms, not out of the question today. Justin Horn is here with the latest. Yeah, guys, uh, we're still watching for the potential of some stronger storms today. We've seen a few this morning, especially out to the north and west, mainly in Edwards and Valverde counties, Kinney County as well. Let's jump to the radar and show you where the storms are right now. You can kind of see they're lining up here and we've had some warnings with these storms. A new one just came out for portions of Edwards County to replace an old one, and that's going to go until it's like 945 this morning or uh, actually until 10 a.m. So let's take a little closer look at uh, some of these storms. And I want to zoom in on the one here near Brackettville. It's passing right over the radar site. It does look like it may be weakening just a little bit, but uh, was putting down some hail potentially north of the city. And this is moving east at about uh, 20 miles per hour. That warning goes until 945 this morning for Kenny County. And then to the north of that, another storm just to the north and west of Camp Wood. This appears to be weakening a little bit too, which is good news. But this uh, this warning is going to go until 1030. And uh, that's going to continue to move east as well, just south of Rock Springs. And then we've had a couple more storms north of that working towards Junction uh, with, uh, with some severe thunderstorm warnings. We'll zoom out some. You'll see San Antonio is uh, pretty quiet at the moment, but we do have a severe thunderstorm watch and that keeps moving on me uh, that uh, we'll have across the hill country until 3 p.m. today. That does not include San Antonio, but that's not to say we couldn't see a storm or two right now. Just a 30 percent chance of rain here in town. 
And the forecast calls for a high right around 76 to 30% chance rain. As I mentioned, northeasterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. And uh, that watch uh, goes until 3 p.m. So that's kind of the time frame through about lunchtime, maybe a little bit after that. We'll watch some of these storms uh, working through the area. Guys. Thank you, Justin. Taking a look out with Transguide drivers here drill, dealing with fog and drizzle, but things look okay from Loop 410 at Jackson Keller. Fiesta may have been pushed back to this summer, but there's one iconic San Antonio spot that is celebrating its colors and magic starting today. The Woody Museum is debuting the new Fiesta exhibit, Te Amo Fiesta, where you will feel like royalty surrounded by medals, papel picado, and you can even relive the popular parade. Alicia Barrera live at the Witty with more on this fantastic exhibit. Alicia. Good morning. Yeah, well, I already feel like royalty. I just want to put one of these gowns on. Take a look at this one. This is from 1975, Order of the Alamo, Miss Gail Harwood, Duchess of Paper Fantasies, La Corte de la Tierra Magica. And something so special about this first gown that you'll see here is that you'll also see it in the Witties medal this year. Mm -hmm. Amy, good morning. Good morning. This is so special. Could you show off this beautiful medal that you'll have here? So this is the design for our Fiesta metal and pen. And it's just a great design. I love the papel picado on here. So we got a nice little sparkle. And uh, it's a beautiful metal. Uh, be on sale here at the Whitty Museum. Very soon. And then another really cool thing about the exhibit, Te Amo Fiesta, is that you actually get to hear from the royalty of 2020. So we know it's been a tough year. We didn't get to see them much because of the pandemic. But something very cool that Amy showed off is that they have a QR code. So we're going to scan here with a Charo Queen of 2020. And we're going to be able to watch her video. And then what are we going to see here, Amy? So each of our royals has been able to kind of tell their story. And so here we have Alexa Chapa actually talking about what it was like to see the, the Charos ride for the first time and to become a part of the organization herself. So they get to talk about why they represent the organizations, which is really powerful. That is. So you have a chance starting today. Doors open at 10 a.m. Te amo fiesta. This exhibit is included with general admission. So that's the good news. So we can still celebrate fiesta in some way during April. Mark, Steph, back to you. Thank you, Alicia. Glad we can do that. And glad we get to take a look at the fiesta royalty again. Absolutely. It's beautiful. Thank, thanks, Thank Alicia. I keep looking over my uh, shoulder here at radar. It's getting at, very active right now. Justin is on top of things. We're going to have an update coming up in a matter of minutes right now. It's just about 940 on your Thursday morning. You're watching GMSA at 9. And does your dog need a job? Yes. Of course. Yeah. How he or she could earn $20,000 by trying out dog beer. Uh -huh. Bush Beer looking for an official dog brew taster for its new canine friendly alcohol free bone broth. So the paycheck for the job is $20,000 seeing as Jeannie Mose takes a look at some of the applications being submitted so far. Is your dog thirsting for employment? And your pup could win a $20,000 salary. With benefits, pet insurance, what's a dog got to do for 20,000 bucks? Being our chief tasting officer is a serious job. Who wouldn't leap at that opportunity? Taste what? Dog brew. By Bush, the brewmaker launched a non-alcoholic drink last year that pets could enjoy while their humans have a beer. And now they're looking to hire a CTO, Chief Tasting Officer. Are you up for it? The applicants are pouring in with names like Goose and Moose and Thor. What's more, they're sending pitches. Nero always finds himself licking empties on the grass. They're pitching their anatomy. Thurman has perfect ears that perk up every time a bush is opened. Charlie here is overqualified. The vast size of his nose allows him to smell each ingredient. And the glint of Rudy's red eye might catch the recruiter's eye. Hold on. Murray's owner says his one blue eye would look good representing the face of a brewing company. Applicants are posing with Bush products, demonstrating their appetite for the job. Even oldsters like 16-year-old Mocha are applying. 
The drink the winner's image will be used to pitch consists of bone broth and veggies and spices. The dogs in this online review were a bit confused, but seemed to like it. Their owner, not so much. Bland. You're probably not going to drink this for fun. It's not bad. It's not great. It's something I think I might even cook with, though, based on the ingredients that are in here. The winning canine better sound more enthusiastic than that. With all the competition, <coughs> applicants better be willing to beg for this job. Genie Most, CNN, New York. So how do you apply? Post a picture of your dog on social media and their qualifications with the hashtag Bush CTO contest. So I, I, I couldn't help but notice your look of disapproval because I think you think Truman should win this contest. Well, the problem is he's a Shiner fan and we'd be switching <laughs> brands if you know what I mean. Okay. No, he doesn't drink Shiner. <laughs> Man, a little bit. Um, Justin Horton joins us now uh, once again and keeping an eye on very active weather situation as we go into mid-morning. Yeah, here's the good news, guys. These storms are starting to weaken some as they work east. Good. So I think we're going to see some of the, the threats with these storms start to calm down a little bit. But let's jump to radar. We'll show you where the storms are. They looked a little rougher earlier. They still do have some warnings on them, though, as they move through Edwards and Kinney County, now starting to move into Uvalde County. And it's it's sort of kind of a line here, broken line of, of just cells, but they are weakening. You can kind of see that, that uh, falling apart. Uh, one moving towards Junction. We've got another moving just south of Rock Springs, and then one that just moved north of Brackettville. Now starting to move into parts of Uvalde County, but it looks a lot weaker. Now it is moving over the radar site, but I think it's probably lost its punch a little bit. This is going to go until 1045, and it looks like they may have put out a new warning on it as it moves into Uvalde County. We'll keep an eye on that. This one really looks weaker. Uh, it still has a warning on it until 1030. We'll see. That may be dropped as it uh, moves out the Rock Springs, and then again, another one up there near Junction. Now, here around San Antonio, we are seeing some light rain and drizzle. It's not really showing up on the radar, but it is out there. There's going to be some damp roads and spots. You may have to use windshield wiper, at least briefly and it's humid and, and fairly warm out there. It doesn't look like a lot of that activity out west will make its way here. Of course, so uh, we'll watch it. There is still potential for some more storms this afternoon, too. Severe thunderstorm watch is going to be in effect across the hill country for the most part until 3 o'clock uh, today. That's north and west of San Antonio. It does not include uh, us here in Bear County. And as we look at the forecast, this is one of our computer models. Seems to be doing a pretty good job handling what we're seeing this morning. Does continue to develop a few storms out west. And then notice it takes most of the activity uh, north of our area as we get into the afternoon. But still, we'll watch for a few storms, especially out near Del Rio this afternoon, as some more energy works across the area. Unfortunately for San Antonio, and I know folks watching are like, man, we need some rain here. It doesn't look all that great today. Again, 30% shot but it's not going to be widespread rainfall, unfortunately. And as we get into tomorrow, there will be a couple more chances before rain chances really go away as we get into uh, next week. Right now, you can see the situation outside. It is a little damp. Temperature is 66 with that drizzle coming down. Northeasterly winds at about 12 miles per hour, and there is some fog to contend with as well. Visibility down to about two and a half miles in Randolph, down to two miles in New Braunfels. And there's some other spots around that uh, is dealing with some fog or drizzle at this hour. Temperatures 60s and 70s. It is going to be a little bit cooler today. Some cooler air trying to work in from the north and east. So it'll keep temperatures in check. 70s uh, right now, Catula, Carrizo Springs, and the 60s elsewhere. And uh, we probably only make low to mid 70s today. 30% chance of rain across the board. Northeasterly winds 10 to 15 miles per hour. There's another look at some of those storms. Again, as they're starting to weaken now, as they push uh, east. In a bigger picture yet, there's that energy that's moving through that's helping to create some of those storms this morning. We've also got that frontal boundary in place. And then as we go towards the weekend, i uh, got to warn you about this. Temperatures, yes, will be in the 80s tomorrow, but cooler air works in on Saturday. Highs only in the 60s. So if you have plans this weekend, be aware it's going to be significantly cooler. 85 degrees tomorrow, 30% chance of rain. I think that's mainly first half of the day. 20% chance on Saturday behind a cold front, 67 and windy. We could see some gusts up to 35 miles per hour out of the north. 67 Sunday, low humidity, a very slight chance of a shower or storm on Monday. Otherwise, we warm back up to typical spring-like numbers by the middle part of next week, guys. Yeah, back to normal here. Thank you, Justin. Yep. It's about 10 till, and we are at about 66 degrees.
The woman who created the wigs for Viola Davis, which she wore on Ma Rainey's Black Bottom, made history as the first black woman to be nominated for a makeup and hairstyling Oscar. Still ahead why one of the wigs took her 80 hours to create. And welcome back. It's 9.53. So we're just 10 days away from the 2021 Academy Awards. Viola Davis is up for Best Actress for her role in Ma Rainey's Black Bottom. Some of the behind the scenes people who worked with Davis are Oscar nominated as well. And as seen as David Daniel reports, they made history in the process. Daddy, daddy. Viola Davis's transformation for Ma Rainey's Black Bottom got hairy. For the wigs worn by the 1920s performer, the filmmakers turned to noted wig maker Mia Neal. Viola is amazing to work with in that way because she gives you permission to not consider Viola and to just consider Ma Rainey. Academy voters are considering Neal. She and stylist Jamika Wilson are the first black women ever Oscar nominated for makeup and hairstyling. Neal's biggest challenge, the horsehair wig Ma Rainey wore on stage, which took Neal 80 hours to create. The horse hairs were actually nothing like human hair. They were thick, like a, think about a wire brush, right? Like so thick, so, you know, that I was actually, I was building the wig and I was thinking, I don't know, if this will actually curl. Like, I have no idea what this hair is going to do. Of course, it came covered in manure and lice eggs, because why not, right? <laughs> and uh, so that was a challenge. With legends on both sides of the camera, Neil knew Ma Rainey would require her best. You just know what a magnifying glass that your work is going to be put under into this. And just knowing what they're bringing, you need to, you know, bring something parallel to that. <laughs> Win or lose on Oscar night, Neil's creations are a crowning achievement. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. And the Oscars will air Sunday, April 25th at 7 p.m. right here on ABC. Should you laminate your vaccination card, even though you may have heard otherwise, it might be a good idea to hold off if you haven't already had it laminated. The reason can be found right on the card. We have details today on the news at noon. Oh, great tease, Justin. And yeah, we're still watching some storms out west. Uh, still a severe thunderstorm warning until 1045 for eastern parts of Kenny County and then western parts of Uvalde. There could be some larger hail in this storm, although they are starting to weaken some. We've lost our warning there in Edwards County and uh, severe thunderstorm watch until 3 p.m. today. 30% chance of rain here in San Antonio. Look for some warmer temperatures tomorrow, cooler this weekend. Well, with the cancellation of Battle Flowers and Fiesta Flambeau for the second year in a row, many may be feeling nostalgic for these beloved San Antonio traditions. And thanks to the University of Texas at San Antonio Library Special Collection, we can view photos from Fiesta P parades from past years and other Fiesta events, some dating as far back as 1904. There's some amazing photo galleries uh, on our website at ksat.com. I'm the oldest person in the studio, so so you'll find me in, uh, in that one picture there. I think it was from 1836. Uh, He's lying. <laughs> Have a great day, guys. <laughs>